sometimes when you go to see a Blumhouse film, it's a, a home run, walk off. And then other times, oh boy, it's god awful. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Confessional, and this is Dave from Nerdbox, and I'm accompanied by my wife Jen, also from Nerdbox. And on this episode, we are talking about the black phone, the wait's over. So fire up that Jiffy Pop and meet us in the booth. small town somewhere near Denver, Colorado. Teenage boys are going missing and falling victim to the grabber. When Finn is kidnapped by the grabber and trapped in his basement, he manages to find help through the trapped spirits of the grabber's past victims. Oh boy, the anticipation for this film <laughs> yes. has been great. Yes, we have waited a long time for this film. If you're a horror fan and a slasher fan, one of the things that's going to draw you in is the mask. So the mask pulls you in and then it comes down to like, oh, is this going to be a disappointment? And I think this one definitely does hit a home run out of the park because mm -hmm. it hits on so many different elements. It does. Where it's pulling in some supernatural things, it's pulling mm -hmm. in slasher things, and subtly, it sprinkles in these little thick gems that you may not realize, but it has a little bit of Silent Hill, the video game in there. It has Stephen King's It in there. It has Stephen King's The Shining in there. It has so many different things in there that it makes me want to do research and find if there's a bunch of easter eggs in there because it pulls from all these little things and it complements each other without stealing it and making it blatant and it just packages it all together very nicely and delivers it to you now i have to say with the filming of this in a recent interview that we did with cj graham to talk about the new friday 13 film that's coming out he talked about that you don't always need to see the kills on mm -hmm. screen. And this film allows your imagination to mm -hmm. fill in the gaps yeah. where it doesn't show you. And sometimes you don't need the imagination or them to show you. It's just obvious. They just kind of do a little blurring, pan out, and you know what's happening. You don't have to... Your imagination doesn't have to run wild and they don't have to be like explicitly like focused on it and being like this is what's happening you know what's happening exactly right we're not little kids here this is not kindergarten we've all gone to see the films and horror films and regular movies so many times that you don't need to tell me every single detail mm -hmm. you give me the crumbs i'm going to figure out those little pieces and that's what this film kind of respects it, it, it knows its audience. Mm -hmm. It knows that the audience is going to say, oh, shit, that's yeah. going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to see any of that graphic material behind no. it because your brain's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And this movie was not overly graphic. There was some blood, but that's it. It wasn't overly graphic. Some blood. There's very little blood. Yeah. It's like a scratch, if you really think about it. And then a, a fight scene. Yeah, uh, there's some blood. Not there's major. some blood. Remember some of the scenes in the basement thing. Yeah. Yeah, there's blood. Not much, though. But anyway, <laughs> acting, phenomenal. Ethan Hawke, I'm not a, a major fan of his. I'm not either, but he really creeped me the fuck out. In Speaking movie. of creep, I've seen seen some comparisons or maybe some draws on the movie The Creep mm -hmm. and then also with a little blending with the Green Goblin from Spider-Man. The way I, I thought about that. Yes, too. there's yeah. the mm -hmm. way Ethan Hawke delivers his lines is very much like Willem Dafoe in mm -hmm. Spider-Man. Yeah. And the way he acts is very much like I, I'm not gonna be able to say his name. What is it? Mark Mark Duplass. Yes, him. And the creep. <laughs> I might look like I eat you up. Stop it! Stop it! So 
So if you haven't seen The Creep, this is a movie that you want to pair with. I think with. it's just called Creep. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so this is a movie that you want to pair with Creep 1 and Creep 2 because mm -hmm. it is just like you watch The Black Phone, you're going to leave. It's like, man, I'm really hyped up. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of creeped out. Yeah. This movie was really good. Mm -hmm. Now what am I going to watch at home? Go home, find Creep 1 and mm -hmm. find Creep 2 and then just continue yeah. that slow trip into darkness mm -hmm. of what a serial killer is. Even Robin Williams in one hour photo. Oh yes, yes. Same kind of concept there. Uh -huh. One of the cool things about this film too is that we've all seen the mask, but the mask has its own personality and you'll kind of understand this. Yeah. So look for this if you haven't seen the film yet, but look for this because the mask changes yes. with Ethan Hawke's personality. It sometimes does. it's smiling, sometimes it isn't. Mm -hmm. So you'll understand that once you see it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've talked a lot here. What <laughs> is your thoughts about the film? Ethan Hawke really creeped me out in this movie. I, I'm i also not a huge Ethan Hawke fan. Never been one of those people that's like, oh my God, it's Ethan Hawke, I have to go see it. Yep. Sinister, I don't get it. No. We've tried. <laughs> We've put gaps in between watching Sinister. I mean, talking years. Like, yeah. oh, maybe mm -hmm. now we'll, we'll just understand. go back to it, yeah. Right? Mm -mm. I've seen the post where it says Sinister is the most scary movie I've ever put on Netflix because people turn it off. They turn it off because it's not that good. Yeah. Not because they're scared. Yeah. It's just not that good. They're reading into the algorithm all wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's They turn it off because it's just not that scary. I... And I mean, listen, I get creeped out. I do. And so do our kids. I, listen, we just, we took them tonight, our teenage daughters, to see this. And our 13-year-old spent three quarters of the movie with a blanket over her head. And Sinister didn't scare her. Nope. Purge franchise, worst film in the series, is the one with Ethan Hawke. Sorry, it took me to like all the other films to go back and say, you know what? Yeah, th this is okay. Mm -hmm. Because the first time I know you watch is like, yeah, this is garbage. And I had to force you to watch the second one because yes. you hated the first I one did. so much. I did, I did. But the other ones have elevated that first one. They have. So now I will watch all of them and I'm okay with all of them. I just kind of forget that Ethan Hawke is in that one because I, I don't think he's good. I, I just really don't. In this movie, however, phenomenal. Yes. He is creepy. He definitely, I mean, listen, we all know based on the trailers, he's the kidnapper. We know this. Like, I'm not spoiling anything. He really strikes me as the type of person that <laughs> would be the grabber. That's he, he, how excellent his acting was yes. because yes. he almost comes off like he's switching personalities as he's going yes. along. Yes. And that's never hinted at in the film, but I think as you start to maybe mm -hmm. piece some things along, you may have the mm -hmm. idea that yeah. maybe this guy has split personalities. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If you've seen it or if you're going to see it, let us know yeah. what you think about it. The little girl who plays... They call her Gwenny. It's probably Gwen. She's, she's, she's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. She is really good. She's funny. She's got a mouth on her. She's cursing out Jesus at one point. Yeah, hashtag what the fuck Jesus yeah. should be trending everywhere. And she and then she was like, what the fuck? So yeah, hashtag what the fuck Jesus. That is what this girl says. And she curses out the cops too, like. Well, it is 78, right? It is, it is. But it's a she's different, like... It's a different time back then, right? Mm -hmm. So, depending on whatever your age is watching this and where you grew up, you may be able to relate to this type of film, right? In the 80s, I grew up in Brooklyn, you grew up in New Jersey, mm -hmm. right? You've seen the memes occasionally pop up on social media where if the street light goes out, that's the time to go home. Yeah. Well, yeah. in the summertime, that's very late. And as you yes. get older, you have a lot more freedom. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the streetlight goes out, it may be 9 o'clock, but then you have to 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, no matter what your age is. Yeah. So yeah. it's really, it would be really interesting to see how the kidnapping rates have changed over time 
as the kids from the 80s have grown up and said, yeah, I don't think I want my kid just out and about. This is, it, from beginning to end, it's just done very well. Acting is great, filming is great, the yeah. blending of styles and yeah. the camera usage is amazing. Mm -hmm. So It just hits on all levels. It's a yeah. very, very good film. It meets, it meets the expectations that yeah. a lot of us have going into it. You can feel the tension in the theater <laughs> as you're watching, and we've yeah. seen it twice now. Yes. So it was the same in both showings. Yeah, and then every, you know, now and then there'll be like a, a jump scene and, and people react in the audience. They jump, you'll hear like a scream or a, <gasps> you know, so uh -huh. that's the kind of atmosphere that it is and that's a good atmosphere. Yep, so what do you rate this one? I would go see it in the theater again because they did. <laughs> as I say, just as you know, we go to see the movie before we take our daughters to see it. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to get a rating of we would go see it again. Mm -hmm. But for me, I would go see it again too. Not because I'm taking them to see it, because it is that good. Yeah. So yes, I'd definitely go see that again in the theaters. Yeah, and we just we saw it last night and then again tonight. So I mean, to see it that close together, you know, it's good. Go mm -hmm. see it. <laughs> yes. So. Now, there's a lot of things going on in Nerdbox right now, right? So if you're watching this review, a couple things, right? Make sure you like the video, right? Because your likes really help get more eyes on the channel. So we appreciate that you would like this video. Comment below. So let's start the conversation on all these videos going forward because one of the key things is we are supporting independent filmmakers mm -hmm. and artists and comic book artists and producers. I can just go down the list of all of the independent people that we are trying to support. So the more people that watch these type of videos, it gives us the chance to spotlight everybody else on other channels. For instance, Five Things debuted this past week. And last week what we did is we had CJ Gramon and Jason Brooks to talk about the next Friday the 13th film that's coming to YouTube for free and expands the legacy and the universe around Jason Voorhees. It's not just the same crap that we've seen pushed out to us in Hollywood. This is an independent filmmaker that's taking this and expanding it and making it very good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, definitely like this video. Go check out some of the other content because we appreciate it. And yeah. they appreciate your support as well. So I can thank you from us and I can thank you from all those guests that we've had on all of our other shows mm -hmm. that we appreciate you watching this video. Yeah. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And until the next, which won't be too far from here, we're going to talk about a movie, The Abandoned. I got some strong things to say about it. So, until the next now, see ya. See ya.